Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mil District Attorney Melinda Cass, and the distinguished guest. I am Soma Sayed, President of the Queens County Women's Bar Association. On be behalf of the Queens District Attorney and Queens County Women's Bar Association, I welcome you all to tonight's event, Trailblazing Women, Historic First in the Legal System and Beyond. It's an honor to be hosting and witnessing this important moment in our history, particularly while we continue to celebrate 100 years of the suffrage movement and the 19th Amendment, women's right to vote. We know that not till 1965, the right to vote was fully realized and exercised by all women. And this struggle continues to this day in various forms, apparitions, and disguises of policymaking to disenfranchise and suppress voters across the country. Tonight, we celebrate the successes and accomplishments of women despite all the odds and barriers placed in front of them. Cambridge English Dictionary defines trailblazing as being the first to do or use something in a way that is an example for other people. Yes, that is what this evening is about. Recognizing, honoring, and presenting women of distinguished careers, distinction, and accomplishments. They're breaking barriers, they're smashing ceilings, and they're leading the way. Tonight, we get to honor and present the first, the first, you're all first. Tonight, we have our first elected woman DA in Queens County, Melinda Cass, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, New York State Attorney General Letitia James, Chief Judge Janet DeFiori, Congresswoman Grace Meng, Judge Doris Lane Cohen, Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark, Judge Ushar Pundit Joran, and former Brooklyn District Attorney Elizabeth Paulsman. You'll hear from all of them very soon. But first, I have the honor of introducing our host and first female elected district attorney of Queens. She's a lifelong Queensonite, born and raised in Queens. District attorney Melinda Cass still lives in the same house she grew up in with her two sons. She's a graduate of St. John's University School of Law worked in private sector prior to public service, became an assembly member from the 28th district from 1994 to 1999. She was the director of community boards for the office of the Queensboro president from 1999 to 2002. Then she went on to become the city council person from the 29th district from 1999 to 2009. Then she became the Queens Brower president from 2014 to 20 until this year, she became the first elected female district attorney of Queens County. District attorney Melinda Cass is a trailblazer and her distinguished career is an inspiration for many women. She has remade the office of the district attorney and has elevated two female to two top positions the positions of Chief Executive Assistant ADA and Chief of Staff. In total, all three top positions in our Queens District Attorney's Office are held by female. This in itself is historic. Please help me welcome District Attorney Melinda Cass to speak. You want to meet her? Thank you so much, uh, Soma. I appreciate that very kind uh, introduction. I was very honored uh, that the Queen's uh, Women's Bar Association honored, uh, not really me, I'm proud of that too, but really Camille Chinkifat uh, and uh, Jen Nyberg, my chief of staff uh, and my chief executive. Uh, it's, it's an amazing office that we have here. We have 700 people, 340 lawyers about. Uh, and we have gone through, since I became the DA, two changes in the bail law, two changes in the discovery law, a worldwide pandemic, 
uh, on health and a national conversation on policing. Uh, and that was just my first 10 months as DA. Uh, and so it has been quite the ride, but I will tell you, because I know there's a lot of district attorney office folks watching this. They are the most dedicated, amazing public servants uh, that I have ever come across. And I'm so proud of what uh, we have done in the first 10 months. But I'm also proud of the amazing bench that we share. Uh, you know, the bench of the Borough of Queens are made up of fantastic professional um, people. Uh, and so I'm proud of our partnership uh, with them. I'm especially proud of the women that are on this call and the women who, are we, on, who we are honoring today. Uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, our participants today um, that are speaking. You know, Congresswoman Grace Meng, who uh, has done an amazing job as a Congresswoman the minute she got there. I feel like she was a leader the minute she got there. Uh, and she is a first, uh, first Asian uh, woman on the East Coast or in Eastern uh, United States. Uh, I'm sure she has many firsts that she's achieved, um, but she's uh, an amazing advocate for her district. Uh, and, and really has respect from the whole like nation. When you speak to other Congress members, they could be from like Idaho or California, like, oh, Grace Meng, we love her. So she must be doing a great job. Uh, and I, I am a constituent and I love it. Uh, as Bronx Attorney, District Attorney Darcel Clark, who's coming back on, you know, Darcel and I uh, today were honored as being the 10th most powerful something, I don't know, city and state. Uh, but it's great to have a club of two uh, when it comes to women as district attorneys in the city of New York. Uh, Brooklyn District Attorney Elizabeth Holtzman became the district attorney in what, 1970? 82. 82. She was five in 1970 something. In 82. Uh, and then I think it was literally another 35 years. And I want all the women on this call to realize this. There's 150 other women on this call or people on this call, men and women, that it was, I think it was 35 years later that there was another female district attorney elected in the city of New York after Elizabeth Holtzman, 35 years. I thought that was amazing. Uh, Judge Doris Lynn Cohen, thank you for the work that you do and for uh, letting us honor you for your work and your firsts and uh, your professionalism on the bench is just remarkable and amazing. And, and Judge Ushir Pandit Durant, I feel like we've known each other for decades, but we've only known each other a while, but we got together quick. And so thank you for your leadership. Uh, and to everyone on the call, you know, we're gonna see the, the, it's the New York State Attorney General, we're gonna see Kathy Hochul, we're gonna see Janet DeFiori. So I'm the first district attorney that's a female uh, from Queens County. Uh, as you know, I honor Dick Brown. He was here for many years, um, but in the hallway, and you have to really have the experience and the visual of this, was really all the former classes of the DA's office. And, you know, there was a lot of guys <laughs> in that hallway. Uh, and every day I walked by it and I said, we should do something about this. We should do something about this. And then um, I decided to do the first of all females. Um, you know, we have the entire Supreme Court, women that are uh, on the Supreme Court, but also, you know, you're gonna hear about them. Hillary Clinton, the first presidential candidate who was a female, uh, you know, Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American female in Congress and so many others. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly that I would not be the Queen's DA were it not for so many women that came before me. I stand on their shoulders. We all stand on their shoulders. And it is why that I wanted to honor them with a historic hallway here at the Queens DA's office. You know, and, and very, two quick, very stories. You know, I became uh, an attorney at Wild Gotchel many decades ago. Uh, and you know, like women wearing, people forget women weren't wearing pantsuits back then. I mean, just little things like that. We weren't allowed to wear them to court. Um, you know, and, and you think about how far we've come. Uh, and when, you know, I'll never forget going to Geraldine Ferraro when I first wanted to run and she said, she said something like, and those of you that knew Geraldine, she said something like, oh, honey, they're going to say anything. You just keep going. And that's what I did. And here we are. I'm very proud of the people that we are honoring. I'm very proud of the office that I, uh, we are running here, um, the, three, the three women. Um, I thank you all for participating uh, today. I do stand on other people's shoulders. Every single day, I remember that fact. Every single day, by the way, and if anyone takes 
if the 161 people that are watching us here today take one thing, every time you succeed, especially as women, reach down and pull someone else with you. Reach down, make sure that other women, other young women have the opportunities that we sometimes never had, but that because we're here, we're creating for them. And that's really when we've all succeeded. So I'm gonna jump in and out as people are talking. I can't tell you I'm gonna be quiet because that's you, you all know me better than that. Um, but right now I'm gonna turn it. I think that I am now introducing the video, Soma. Is that what I'm doing? Yes, you are. Oh, I wanna thank Soma for, for, for her leadership uh, in the Queens Women's County Bar Association. They have been amazing partners. Uh, and we've now welcomed Darcel Clark, uh, who I shared the honor today in City and State. So thank you, Darcel, for joining us. Thank you. Hi, Sorry, I was in before, but my Wi-Fi wasn't good. I had to find a better place. Well, I appreciate that you uh, are making that effort. Thank you for being on with us. So with this event, uh, we honor those women leaders, those firsts in their profession, those people who paved the way and were trailblazers for generations to come. Let's start the video. It's about three minutes long, just so you know, so you can schedule. Hi, my name is Melinda Katz, and I have the honor of being the 24th District Attorney of Queens County. In the last 200 years where there's been a district attorney in Queens, I am the first woman to be holding the office. When I became the DA, I also chose leadership to work with me to make sure that this office was run effectively in fairness and with justice. I chose two women to hold those positions. The chief executive for my office is Jen Nyberg. She is the first female chief executive for the Queen's District Attorney's Office. And the chief of staff, Camille Chinkifat, who also shows great leadership every single day. We thank everyone for that opportunity, but we stand on the shoulders of so many women who came before us so many experts in their fields, so many people who blazed the trail before us, and we are thankful to them. And today is just a small way for us to say thank you and to show our appreciation for the historical value and for the value to, that they posed for the future. Being the first woman to follow this gentleman as District Attorney of Queens County, it's a responsibility that I do not take lightly to make sure that this borough is a fair borough, a just one. I'm excited by the opportunity and we look forward to the challenge. It is important to me that we recognize those women that came before me, those women that broke barriers and smashed the glass ceiling. And it was important for us to pay tribute to them, to thank them and to show them how deeply honored we are to follow in their footsteps. That's why here in the executive suite and in our hallway, we pay tribute to those women who were trailblazers. These are remarkable women whose accomplishments we can all take pride in. I am delighted to share their stories with you. Geraldine Ferraro. Ferraro joined the Queen's District Attorney's Office and became part of the first Special Victims Bureau. Ferraro was elected to Congress in 1978 and just six years later became the first woman to be nominated as vice presidential candidate for a major political party. Elizabeth Holtzman blazed trails as the first woman elected to serve as district attorney in New York City when she was elected Kings County DA in 1981, and then as the first woman elected New York City Controller in 1988. Before that, she was a four-term congresswoman representing New York's 16th congressional district after defeating a 50-year incumbent. Before she became the first woman to win the presidential nomination of a major American political party, Hillary Clinton was already one of the most accomplished stateswomen in U.S. history. As First Lady, twice elected U.S. Senator, and U.S. Secretary of State. Shirley Chisholm was the first African-American woman elected to serve in Congress, representing Brooklyn's 12th Congressional District for seven terms. She first served in public office as a state assemblywoman in 1964. Tis James became the first woman and first African-American to be elected as Attorney General of New York State in 2018. She has been a champion for civil rights activists and consumers, taking on opponents from the NBA to the NRA to the White House. Judith Kay was the first woman named to the highest court in New York and the first to serve as the state's chief judge, a job she held longer than any of her 21 male predecessors. When Darcel Clark was elected to the office of Bronx County District Attorney, 
She became the first woman to hold that position and the first African-American woman in New York State to hold the office of district attorney. Doris Ling Cohen is the first woman of Asian descent to be appointed to an appellate panel in New York State. She was elected New York State Supreme Court Justice in 2002. In 2014, Justice Ling Cohen was appointed to the appellate term, First Department. She is founding member of the Asian American Bar Association and the New York Asian Women's Center. In 2018, Ushir Panda Durant made history as the first South Asian judge elected to New York State Supreme Court in Queens and the first South Asian woman judge elected in the state of New York. A Queens native, Grace Meng, is the first Asian American woman elected to Congress from New York. She serves on the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus and the Democratic National Committee. Sheila Abdu Salam was the first African American woman to serve on the New York State of a Court of Appeals. Originally from Washington, D.C., and a graduate of Columbia University School of Law, Abdu Salam championed the rights of the vulnerable and persons with mental illness. Abdu Salam's untimely death cast a national spotlight on the issue of depression. Sandra Day O'Connor was the first woman to be nominated and confirmed as Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. She also served as the first female majority leader in the Arizona State Senate or any state legislature in the country. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who we recently lost and who was a great loss to our profession. In life, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was the first Jewish woman to be seated on the nation's highest court. Even in death after a lifetime of breaking barriers, she continued to make history, becoming the first woman and first Jewish person to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol building. Elena Kagan was the first woman to serve as Dean at Harvard Law School and the first woman to serve as U.S. Solicitor General. Sonia Sotomayor was the first Latina to serve on the Supreme Court and the first Puerto Rican woman on the federal bench when appointed to the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. New York State Chief Judge Janet DeFiori has led the New York State court system since 2016 as the Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals. And as we honor all these women who blazed the trail in their own time, we also need to make sure that they are not the only firsts. We need to make sure that we continue to pride ourselves in the women who came before us, acknowledge that we stand on their shoulders. And as we move forward and rise up through the ranks, we need to remember to lift those young women that come after us and lift them up so that they can also succeed, give them the opportunities to succeed, and make sure that we are a part of their future. Thank you very much for being part of today. Thank you, District Attorney Melinda Cass for the wonderful display of, of the first of first. I personally had the pleasure of walking down the hallway and it was just simply breathtaking memorable and very inspirational. And I can't wait for each one of you to go and see your uh, picture along with the others. It's an amazing sight. And I'm so happy to be part of this wonderful first of first. Uh, now I have the pleasure of introducing uh, our Attorney General, Letitia James. She's the 67th Attorney General for the state of New York is the first woman of color to hold a statewide office in New York and the first woman to be elected attorney general. So that's a quite few first. Uh, before becoming the attorney general, she was a New York City public advocate. Prior to that, she was a city council member for 10 years. And before that, she was, a, she was the Brooklyn Regional Office, head of the Brooklyn Regional Office of the New York City Attorney General's Office and she started her career at the Legal Aid Society. And she is first of first, and please welcome our New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, to speak. I wanna first thank and congratulate Queens DA, Melinda Katz, as you approach your one year anniversary as the first woman district attorney in the borough of Queens. For more than two decades, Melinda has been one of New York's strongest advocates for working families, immigrants, women, children, and equal justice under the law. I've had the pleasure of working side by side with her 
in the New York City Council, and I've always admired her commitment to fairness, equity, and common sense second chance reforms. I also want to applaud Melinda for bringing so many talented women onto her leadership uh, team, including Chief Assistant District Attorney Jennifer uh, Nyberg and Chief of Staff Camille Chinkifat. And I want to congratulate all the other trailblazing women who are being honored here today. You are charting a better future and changing the course of history in the great state of New York. The fact is, when women are in charge, policies are more inclusive and better for working families. And everyone knows if you want something done and done right, give it to a woman. As we stand on the eve of another possible historic trailblazing first, I am reminded of how far we have come in the journey for gender equity and women's rights in America. During this election season, millions of New York women are exercising a right that we fought for and won only 100 years ago. And it was a right that was not fully granted to women of color until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. But we have made up for lost time by breaking every barrier and rising to every challenge over the past century. I'm honored to be the first African-American woman to be elected to statewide office in the state of New York. But once upon a time, I was just a girl from Brooklyn, dreaming about justice and equality for all. Growing up, they tried to count me out and write me off as a statistic. I came from modest means and didn't have much except the firm belief that I could do or achieve anything that I set my mind to. I also had some strong shoulders to stand on. Women like Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, Bella Abzuck, Charlotte Ray, Constance Baker Motley, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the notorious RBG. They've shown us all what is possible. And now it is our time to pave the way for the next generation of trailblazing women. Now more than ever, it is imperative that we as women are engaged and are fighting back against the forces that seek to hold us back and destroy our democracy. Today, we not only stand with the residents of Queens and the people of New York, we stand in solidarity with all the women around the world working for positive change. My Shiro, Sister Shirley Chisholm, once said, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Today, we are not asking for a seat at the table. We are demanding it because we are women determined to write our own destiny. We do not erect barriers, we break them. That is our message, and this, my friends, is our moment. Thank you, and again, congratulations to all of today's honorees. Gotta love Tish. She always makes me want to stand up and salute. <laughs> you know, she always knows exactly what to say. Thank you, Tish James. Yes, she has some amazing, she's a powerhouse. Now I have the distinct honor of introducing our Congresswoman Grace Meng. She's serving her fourth term in the U.S. House of Representatives. She's the first and only Asian American member of Congress from New York. She sits in the House of Appropriations Committee and also in the House Ethics Committee. She's the senior whip and regional whip for New York and a founder and co-chair of the Kids Safety Caucus. She also made a law where the federal law struck down the word oriental from the federal law itself. She was born in Elmer's Queens and she lives in Bayside and Flushing. And prior to going to the US Congress, she was the state assembly person and she worked in the public interest sector as an attorney. Please welcome Congresswoman Grace Meng. Thank you so much, Soma, for the kind introduction. And thank you so much to our trailblazing district attorney right here in Queens, Melinda Katz. And thank you, Melinda, for your leadership and for this award, but also for being a role model for so many women across the borough and state, uh, inc and including and especially uh, moms of young kids. I feel like I have often uh, confided in Melinda 
the the struggles and the funny stories um and she makes it look so easy so thank you da cats for this tremendous honor uh i think i've been in that hallway a few times in years past and just to see that that video and the slideshow of what it looks like now uh has a tremendously different and powerful and empowering feel um, and I thank you for doing that, not just for the honorees, um, but for uh, foreshadowing uh, the history makers to come in this borough and, and great country. I want to give a special shout out to Doris Lean Cohan and Elizabeth Holtzman. They are two people in my political career who reached out and gave advice even before I asked for it. And I think that especially as women, uh, it is something that is not always easy to find. You know, when I first got involved in politics, people asked me who my political rabbi was. And I never understood that question because, you know, my parents worked in a restaurant. It's not like we sat around talking about politics or anything like that. Um, you know, so especially for many of us, who are the first, but hopefully will not be the last in our positions, the concept and practice of mentorship is rare and so important. Um, you know, for those of you who know me for a long time, might have heard my story about when I was growing up, I never thought I would go into politics. I was probably the shyest kid you ever met um, if there was a poll as to who in your class would be the least likely to run for office, that would 100% be me. It would probably be unanimous. Um, and so I, I never ever thought that I would be here. Um, but being in law school and being a part of the community and volunteering um, and interactions with many of you probably on this Zoom made me realize that there was a need in my community um, just to access basic government services. And you didn't have to be someone wealthy. You didn't have to be someone um, with a fancy title to be able to make a difference. And in a, in a lot of the uh, internships that I had through government agencies, I also realized that there weren't a lot of people who looked like me. There weren't a lot of women of color. There weren't a lot of women, period. Um, and so it's so important um, that we do whatever we can to, as the DA said, to lift others up who come after us and, and behind us. And women have led the way in important social justice movements across the country and across the world. Uh, most recently, we celebrate the life and the legacy of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, I work in a place where over... 75% of my colleagues are male. So I definitely appreciate the audience and the company that we have uh, here tonight. And when I first came to Congress, and I remember talking to uh, Melinda about this, I felt really self-conscious as a mom of, of young kids. There just weren't a lot of people who had that background with me that I, that I served with. Um, and so... There were so many firsts, not necessarily for me, but for, I would blame my kids on a regular basis for this sound, but they're actually not here. <laughs> no, usually it's their fault. Um, but, you know, whether it was being a mom, FaceTiming my kids doing homework from the floor of the House in Congress, um, you know, it, it was, it, it's been challenging and in, in many ways you feel like you're kind of trying to change the standard, but we elect more women and we have more women in leadership positions, like all the paths that all of you started. It's so we could build a stronger coalition and have that new necessary and newish perspective as women and as moms um, from, and changing the standard is so important. From when I first ran for Congress, my son actually asked me if men were allowed to run for Congress, if men were allowed to run for office. And I know Melinda has a similar story with her kid. And so this is about changing the standard. I wanted to share my most recent legislation that just became law. For those of you who have jobs with health and flexible spending accounts, you can now use that money to buy pads and tampons and cups. Um, we never were allowed to before, although for years, 
men have been allowed to buy condoms. So this is another example about changing the standard. Yeah, use your account before it ends up this year, ends this year. Um, but you know, I'm I'm honored to have this uh, recognition. Honored to be here alongside folks like Geraldine Ferraro and Shirley Chisholm, upon whose huge, huge shoes uh, I, I can't even try, but but try every day to to fill. Um, and again, just want to echo what our DA said about continuing to lift uh, women who come after us up. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Congresswoman. I think, you know, one thing we can take from here, what DA said, lifting others along the way that as we go through this path. So I think it's an amazing message for everyone. Now I have the pleasure of introducing our Chief Judge of the State of New York, Judge Jeanette DeFiori. She started out as an Assistant District Attorney for the Westchester District Attorney's Office. Subsequently, she became a judge. And then she became, she was elected to as a Justice of the New York State Supreme Court. In 2005, she became the Westchester County District Attorney. And on December 1st, 2015, she was nominated to the highest court as the chief judge. And since January 21st, 2016, she's been serving as the chief judge of the state of New York. And she has the immense job of navigating the entire court system through this pandemic. And as an attorney, I know that's not an easy, easy job. So please help me welcome Chief Judge Jeanette DeFiori to make her remarks. Thank you. Greetings, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's ceremony. It was only a year ago that Melinda Katz made history as the first woman to be elected District Attorney of Queens County. And with the appointment of Jennifer Nyberg as Chief Assistant and Camille Chinky Fat as Chief of Staff, the DA has achieved another notable first, ensuring that the top three leadership positions here in this District Attorney's Office are all occupied by women. It wasn't that long ago that I was one of the few women District Attorneys in New York State, so I take great personal pride in being able to congratulate District Attorney Katz Chief Assistant Nyberg and Chief of Staff Chin Ki Fat for breaking barriers and for shining a spotlight on the accomplishments and contributions of women lawyers and prosecutors in our state. Congratulations to DA Katz, Jennifer and Camille, and best wishes to all of my friends at the Queens County District Attorney's Office. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief Judge Jenna DeFiori for those wonderful remarks. Now I have the pleasure of introducing our Bronx District Attorney, Madame Darcel Clark. She's the 13th District Attorney for Bronx County and she started that job on January 1st, 2016. She is the first African woman to be elected a District Attorney in New York State, also the first woman in that position. So there are quite a few firsts. She has been in the judiciary for 16 years before she became the district attorney of the Bronx County. Currently, she's the vice president of the National District Attorneys Association and a board member of the District Attorneys Association of the state of New York. And she has implemented some amazing ideas and um, uh, in her uh, Bronx district attorney's office. Please help me welcome uh, Bronx District Attorney Darcy Clark to say if you, to make her remarks. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? We got you, Darcy. We got okay. you. I'm at an event and they're just now doing the Pledge of Allegiance, so I'm going to have to be really brief. But uh, Melinda, I want to congratulate you on your one year anniversary. I'm so happy to have a sister with me in the New York City, five DAs. Now I have another woman with me. I'm not the only one anymore. So I'm just so proud to have you there, Melinda. You're the first and you're not going to be the last. 
Congratulations on Jen and Camille, both dynamic women. I love that hallway you did. I have to come by your office now. That's amazing. But uh, thank you um, to all of you. Congratulations on jobs well done. Uh, my sister, Tish James, of course, I always have to give acknowledgments to her. We went to Howard Law School together, so we're in this fight together. Um, I stand on the shoulders of so many that you have on that wall. It brought tears to my eyes to see Sheila Abdul-Salam. She was a great friend of mine and mentor. We were both on the appellate division first department together, and you couldn't have picked a better person to be there. And she was the first. She swore me in as district attorney. So thank God that she was here at that time for me. Um, Judge Judith Kay was also a great friend and mentor. And of course, the great Liz Holtzman, who was the first of all of us to be district attorney, a woman in New York City. So it's wonderful being the first, but I don't want to be the last and I don't want to be a footnote. So I'm just going to do this job every day, being unapologetic about the work that I have to do as district attorney, keeping the Bronx safe, and being fair to the criminal justice system and those who have to uh, navigate through those shores. So this is a wonderful time to be a DA. Um, I'm happy to be here with all of you. I congratulate you all. And Melinda, thank you so much for your leadership. Thank you, DA Clark. And uh, thank you for stepping out of your event to join us. It means a lot. All right, take care. Thank you so much, congratulations to D.A. Darcel Clark. At this point, I have the pleasure of introducing the first district attorney of New York City, former Brooklyn district attorney, Elizabeth Halsman. Not only she is known by being the first district attorney, she was also the uh, U.S. Congressperson and she served in the House Judiciary Committee. She questioned uh, former President Ford about the Nixon pardon. So she was part of many, many history. She also uh, chaired the Immigration and Refugees Subcommittee. And she led the Congressional Caucus for Women's Issues. She was the, she was the only woman to be elected controller of New York City. And she was appointed by President Bill Clinton to the Nazi and Japanese Imperial War Criminal Records Interagency Working Group, which oversaw the declassification of more than 8 million pages of secret Nazi war crimes files held by the US government. So she has tremendous career and many distinctions. Please help me welcome former Brooklyn District Attorney Elizabeth Halsman. Thank you so much, uh, Soma, and thank you so much, uh, DA Katz. Uh, I'm really very honored to be part of this program. I'm very excited by your election as DA, your tenure as DA, your plans for the office, the changes you've made, the fact that you've brought in so many women, and the fact that you've acknowledged the role that so many other women have played in making your success possible, but also will be important uh, in making a success of other women possible, just as you and your success will be a shining example to many, many women of what's possible. I, I just go back to when I was, uh, I had no ex exposure to TV before I became Congresswoman, but during impeachment proceedings, uh, I got a little bit of recognition. And one of the things that happened was that young women came up to me and said, I'd never seen a woman in Congress, I've never seen a woman as a lawyer. I mean, that was really far, a long time ago. And they became lawyers and they saw possibilities for themselves that they never did otherwise. So DA Katz, you're in such a position to make such a huge difference as you already are. And I also want to acknowledge, of course, the other wonderful women uh, who've spoken, who will speak, but I also want to give a wonderful shout out to Congresswoman Grace Meng. I was I remember coming out to Queens for you in her, on a rainy day to help support your election. I'm so glad that I did and so proud of the important work you're doing in Congress. Just a few uh, short um, points to make um, that I could share with people. Uh, first of all, uh, getting elected DA could have been the toughest race I ever had because I wasn't running against 
a um, uh, any real opponent. My opponent was unknown, but I was running against the image of a DA. And the only image there was, was of a man. It was, you know, famous um, stereotype of what a DA looked like. I didn't look like a DA. And people actually came up to me and said, you know, Liz, I voted for you for Congress. I voted for you for Senate. You're great. I love you. But DA is not a job for a woman. And they thought they were being nice to me. They said, oh, it's too tough, too much pressure, too difficult. Well, the good news is that while those prejudices were there, we've seen them crumble, not entirely, but we've seen them crumble enough to have the first woman DA finally in Queens, first woman DA in the Bronx, definitely not the last in both cases, but wonderful breakthroughs in terms of possibility for women. And uh, the other thing I just want to mention is what a woman can do, not only being an inspiration by the fact that she's made it to that high position, but when I became DA, not only was there no woman as a bureau chief, no woman in any position of real authority in the office, the same was true for African-Americans. So it wasn't just women, it was kind of bigotry, across the board bigotry. Well, the great news is, and I know you know that too, DA Katz and others, that you could just snap your fingers and change that. And I did, and I'm so proud to have such wonderful women uh, uh, and uh, working for me and raised a position of bureau chiefs and top positions in the office and ultimately chief assistant, and also to desegregate those positions as well on a racial basis. So there's a, so much can be done. The rape laws were antiquated. We changed them. The methods for, for dealing with domestic violence were antiquated. We changed them. The laws against molesting children were terrible. We changed them. Uh, in every position I found myself in, there was always an opportunity to reach out and help deal with women's questions that had never been dealt with. I mean, for example, when I became controller, it turned out that New York City's municipal hospitals wouldn't do a screening mammogram for women for breast cancer. You had to actually have a lump before they would do a screening mammogram. Just think about that. So how many lives were changed and saved by that small, by that small change? So I just wanna say thank you for acknowledging the wonderful role that women in New York have played, the wonderful role that women in positions of political power are playing and will play. And thank you, for Melinda, for doing this and for including me. I'm very honored by this. There's a lot of people who worked on your campaign that are chatting up in the chat room, just so you know. Yeah. I know. I see. <laughs> very well, nice to see. I'm very, uh, listen, I didn't make it without standing on the shoulders of a lot of other people. Thank you for that. And thanks to everybody who helped me. Congratulations, um, former uh, district attorney, Elizabeth Hulsman, and for being, uh, for uh, making the path for everyone else. And I think the message, one message that we also can take is that hopefully uh, uh, DA Cass will not be the first and the last. Uh, DA Darcel Clark will not be the first and the last you'll continue the path for women to be in all this position and places that they have never had the chance before. Thank you. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Judge Doris Ling Cohen. She is the first elected New York State Court judge who became first Asian female judge in New York Supreme Court history on November 5, 2002 with 230,000 votes. That's an amazing uh, accomplishment. Before becoming a judge, uh, she was the attorney general in the consumer fraud protection, also a deputy in charge of legal counsel for the New York City Department for the Aging. And what I particularly learn and enjoy that she has been consistently trying to promote Asian American judges to the bench and female leadership and uh, it's touched me, her background touched me and her amazing accomplishment and her generosity with her time and lesson. So congratulations, please help me welcome the Honorable Doris Ling Cohen. Sorry, I was muted. 
Thank you, Soma, for that very kind introduction. Congratulations to District Attorney Katz and her team for an amazing win and her almost one year anniversary. Uh, how quick time flies. Um, also congratulations to Janet and Camille. Uh, Camille has been a long time friend. I know having her part of your team means that you have a stellar team, uh, as well as Dirk, who invited me. I thank him very much. Um, I am sure that the district attorney will be making many more uh, headlines in the future for her uh, many ju uh, criminal justice initiatives. Um, and indeed, I think Queens County is very lucky to have her. Uh, it is indeed my honor to be among so many distinguished women, and I thank the district attorney and her team for so many storied careers, uh, not to take away from any of the accomplishments, but I look forward to the day when we need not celebrate the breaking of a glass ceiling or first. Um, I appreciate uh, District uh, Attorney Katz's statement as well as Soma's statement about lifting others up. Um, that is why I've had more than 200 interns in my career. Um, and I think that uh, if anybody can take something away from this, it's that your advice, even when you think you don't have advice to give, uh, is important to others. You never know how you can touch the lives of others. I encourage people to take interns, to give people uh, a helping hand. Um, similar to Grace Meng, who I love dearly, um, I did not grow up in the family of uh, lawyers or uh, politicians. And so every time I even thought about becoming a judge, I just had no clue. And I always felt that as soon as I figured out how to become a judge, there was the secret book that nobody told me about. Um, and so uh, having a helping hand, and that's why it was important for me to take so many interns uh, to kind of open the door for somebody else. So Martin Luther King's dream of that one day we would all be judged, uh, not by the color of our skin, or I would add, by our gender still has not been realized. Um, to be judged by our character would be a wonderful thing. It is no accident that uh, Martin Luther King was a big advocate of voting. Um, and uh, it is, I think, timely to say that uh, voting is how we all got to our positions, that we became our the first. Um, but it is time for the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Um, and it is only when we vote uh, that all communities can be heard and representatives from all communities can be elected and true change can happen. So I encourage all of you out there to vote. Uh, it's important to encourage your neighbors to vote your friends, your family, your non-friends as well, as long as they vote the right way. Just joking. <laughs> uh, in any event, um, it really touched me that uh, the district attorney had that beautiful hallway. I'm so touched that I'm part of it. Um, she is really raising all of us up and I appreciate very much being part of this. Thank you so much. And Judge, I appreciate you being part of this. I understand that it's very early in the morning where you are. Yes, <laughs> but it's my pleasure. I'm usually up by this time anyway. Well, thank you so much for taking time. I know that you, uh, were, you know, especially made it and we appreciate everything that you are doing. Thank you, Judge Doris Lynn Cohen. And yes, voting is so important tomorrow, November 3rd. If you haven't voted yet, please do. Hi. Hi, <laughs> uh, Hunter. Yeah, hi, Hunter. Where, where, where did the other one go? <laughs> he, he's hiding, too many women. <laughs> okay, I got, I got it, I got it. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Judge Ushar Pandit Doran. She worked 
in the Queens District Attorney's Office for 25 years with distinction and honor prior to becoming the first elected civil court judge in 2015. Then in 2018, she became the first Asian judge elected to the state Supreme Court in Queens. And she's also the founder and a bar leader of the, and the first president of the South Asian Indo-Caribbean Bar Association of Queens. She's a first of first, and she's a great role model for all South Asians and all women and people who want to pursue law going to the judiciary. Please help me welcome Judge Usher Pandit Doran to make her remarks. Thank you, Selma. Uh, I wanna congratulate uh, DA Katz uh, for your historical election and having a historical uh, uh, first assistant, Jen Nyberg, who I know very well, and as uh, your uh, chief of staff, a wonderful person. I was at the event that Queens County Bar Association held a couple of weeks ago where you were all honored. And I had heard the wonderful remarks that you all made. You know, your assistants appear before me all the time. And I have to tell you that they're professional, always prepared. So you should be proud of all the people who work for you. Wonderful Thanks people. Thanks a lot, Judge. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and um, I want to thank you also for honor of including me with such distinguished panel of uh, people here. I'm truly humbled to be included with so many groundbreaking women. I admire all of you. In fact, some of you who are my own role models and each of you represent a role model for any woman who is in the legal profession or thinking of uh, entering the legal profession. If anyone had told me almost 33 years ago as I walked down the third floor hallway uh, to meet with the then DA for my final interview that one day the Queen's DA would be a woman, that I would be a co-panelist with the Chief Judge of Court of Appeals in the state of New York, the Lieutenant Governor of New York, the New York State Attorney General, former District Attorney Brooklyn of Brooklyn, the co a Congresswoman from my own former district, and an Asian judge, I would have said no. There's no way, That's, that couldn't happen. And if somebody told me that they would all be women, I would have thought that they're all crazy. And it's not because I did not believe that women could not accomplish such feat. I did, but belief and reality do not always intersect. And progress, as we all know, can be incremental and slow. I mean, as it is after DA Holzman's election, it took over 30 years before another woman was elected to the DA position in the city of New York. Now that's slow, that's really slow. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I'm honored to be part of this panel. Now, in my own case, throughout my career, I have not been a person who could easily accept no for an answer. And I suppose that is a trait that all you women probably share. I do not think, for example, that everyone jumped for joy. And as DA Holtzman just stated, when she first announced that she wanted to run for Brooklyn DA's office, imagine, a woman who wanted to be the chief law enforcement officer of Brooklyn. Everybody, been, as like you stated, uh, uh, Ms. Holtzman, they were all saying, no, it's too much, uh, don't do it. But you did not accept the no, and you went for it. And thank you for doing that because, because of you, many other women joined the law profession as you indicated, and it helped get Darcel Clark and DA Katz to run for the DA's office. Um, for all of us, for many of us, roadblocks were put up, but you all went around them. Uh, walls were put up, but you went through them. And glass ceilings were artificially placed above your head, but you all smashed through them. So I'm very proud to be part of this distinguished panel. As for my own personal story, as uh, Soma mentioned, and my bio indicates, I was born in India and I came here at the age of 10, uh, not far from where my office is right now, landed at JFK airport, and I immediately wanted to go back home. It was December, it was cold. I didn't speak the language, people looked different. 
Uh, and I said, I will go live with my grandmother. Of course, my parents did not relent. <laughs> I grew up here in Flushing, went to all the local schools um, at St. John's University. While all of my Indian friends majored in pre-med and or pharmacy, I majored in political science, where I learned about uh, Shirley Chisholm and other historical women who joined uh, the, the, the profession of uh, war in politics. Um, and while they all continue in the science field, I went on to law school. And um, I was, I'm sure that many of you, I think Judge Flug spoke to at one of my inductions and probably uh, Liz Holtzman, when they went to law school, there were not too many women who were attending law school. I encountered a similar uh, experience as I'm sure Judge uh, Link Cullen did as well, that when we were in law school, I imagine there were not many Asian or South Asians in law school either. Um, so I was one of the first. Uh, it was exciting. It was different. It was fun. Uh, after being elected uh, to the civil court in 2015, um, I was also very, I was proud to, as Soma mentioned, find being one of the mem founding members of the South Asian Indo-Caribbean Bar Association. Uh, through that association, we strive to inspire and encourage South Asian Indo-Caribbean lawyers, men and women, to aspire to leadership positions. Uh, once again, I want to thank DA Katz for putting this together and for including me on this panel. Thank you to the Women's Bar Association of Queens County for co-sponsoring the event. I also want to thank my husband for his never ending support and encouragement. <laughs> and you know, they say behind every successful man, there's a woman. So I think behind every successful woman, there is a, hopefully an encouraging a partner. Uh, mine is a husband. Uh, and finally, thank you all for all the panelists for having the strength and resolve to not taking no for an answer and for, for setting an example and carving out a path for the other women to follow. And I hope to inspire many to all of our positions. Thank you so much. And Ms. Syed, before we uh, thank you, Judge, so much uh, for your great words and always your great partnership uh, on and off the bench. It's really been um, a joy and thank you. Uh, I do want to acknowledge some elected officials who are on this call also. Um, Senator Leroy Comrie, a great partner of mine for many years. Assemblywoman Neely Rosick, who has joined us. Assemblyman David Weprin, uh, who has joined us. Simone Marie Meeks uh, is here. I think Congressman Meeks is also on, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, interim borough president who was supposed to be there for two months, then six months, and then one year. Uh, Sharon Lee, who's doing a phenomenal job. And of course, the Honorable Carmen uh, Velasquez. And I think I saw uh, the Honorable Lourdes Ventura on the list as well. Um, thank you all for joining us as well. And thank you. Uh, back to you, uh, Ms. Syed. Sorry. For oh, thank you, DA Cass. I also want to mention two other judges. Uh, uh, Judge Sally Unger joined us. Okay. Also, ju uh, Justice um, um, Siegel, she also joined us. So thank you for joining us. Um, not, I have now the pleasure of introducing the 77th Lieutenant Governor of the state of New York, Kathy Huckle. And she started as a, a local town board member before serving as the Erie County Clerk. And then she became the New York's 26th Congressional District Congressperson. And since taking and becoming the second highest um, elected official in New York State, she has spearheaded and championed the Enough is Enough law to prevent sexual assault on college campuses, spearheaded the state's paid family leave program, and is continuing to work to eliminate the gender wage gap. And she's continuing to work on economic development and job creation efforts across the state. And particularly since the pandemic, it's a uh, very important and issue for all of us New Yorkers. Please help me welcome Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hockel. Well, Hockel. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hockel, and I'm so honored to close out this amazing event recognizing historic female firsts in the legal system and beyond. 
And I want to thank my good friend, District Attorney Melinda Katz, for honoring the women who've made a real difference in the lives of others. As the first woman to be elected District Attorney in Queens, you are a true leader in truly helping empower others and advocating for a better, more equal and inclusive society. I also applaud your historic move to fill the top three leadership positions in the DA's office with women, knowing if you want to get it done right, you give it to a woman, right? Well, during the centennial of the 19th Amendment and women's right to vote, we reflect on how far we've come and how far we still have to go. Women have always been there, forging a path for leadership and equality for future generations. Like District Attorney Katz, I have fought long and hard to amplify the voices of women. And as a practicing attorney early in my career, I'm certainly familiar with being the only woman in the room and struggling to have my voice heard at a time when there are so few role models. Each of the first celebrated here today are women I've come to admire, respect, and in many cases, call my friend. And women across the state share in the pride of knowing that each of the women honored broke down barriers and paved the way for countless others. Little girls can see these portraits and know they too can become a woman of great influence in the once male dominated fields of politics and the law. The path forward is not easy and for women of color, unfortunately it's even harder. And it may seem like an everlasting fight for equality, but it is the call of our lifetime. Real change is worth fighting for and I am proud every day for the opportunity to push for that change forward together. Again, my congratulations to all the incredible awardees and for District Attorney Katz for hosting this inspiring event. Thank you. Thank you for those remarks, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. Um, today and tonight has been amazing because all of your leadership are paving the paths for, for me and for others and for our future, for our future. And each of your story I read, uh, and it's very touching. Your careers are distinctive. Your accomplishments are distinctive. You're, you each stand on your own merits. And that's what this is, is so amazing. When the district attorney told me that what she was doing, I thought it was so amazing. And I felt immediately great inspiration. And I know District Attorney wants to say a few words. So I just want to thank you, Soma, for being a great um, moderator and hostess tonight. I want to thank the Queens Women's Bar Association for keeping up the fight. I, I really would be remiss if I didn't make a special acknowledgement to Judge uh, Siegel, Bernice Siegel, you know, who was out there fighting for generations. And uh, she really uh, has been an amazing force on her own. I know the other judges who represent women and represent a lot of firsts, um, but you know, the first time a lot of people see the criminal justice system is when they are in front of a judge. And that's what they leave uh, the courtroom knowing, that's what they see, that's who they listen to, that's who they expect fairness and equity from. And I think the uh, amount of women we have on our bench, uh, we can always want more, um, but you know, the ones that are there are amazing. Um, we like the guys too, um, <laughs> but you know, uh, we're honoring here women and uh, I'm just so happy to be in their company. Um, and to all the Congress members and senators who fought the fight when, you know, fighting the fight wasn't that easy. Uh, and, you know, we need to just remember that and acknowledge that every single day. Um, and as far as the law profession goes, you know, look, I remember what it was like to start as a young attorney uh, 30 years ago. Um, we've made great strides. We have many more to go. Um, but, you know, we're all doing it together. And I think that that's one of the wonderful things. You know, I was very... Um, I was not happy that we couldn't all get together, but at the same time, so many more people could partake in this event because of uh, Zoom and because of modern technology. Uh, and maybe we are reaching uh, more people uh, than we might have. Uh, and so we take, uh, we take lemons and we make lemonade. Uh, that's what we do as women. That's what we do as parents during this time of very, you know, I saw one of the chats, someone said, you know, can someone talk about the homeschooling and the difficulties of it? Um, I'm, I hear you, <laughs> and I see it, uh, and it is, uh, it is hard, um, but we do what we need to do, and that's really what we've always done for generations, and that's what this, is event, this event is about. With every generation of us came a different fight, came a different task, 
came different challenges and came different generations after us uh, that we were responsible for lifting up. So uh, Salma, thank you, uh, Ms. Syed, for the work that you did here tonight and for always. You're welcome. Again, congratulations, DA Cass, for your for you trailblazing and leading Queens. And you know, it's 21st century. That's this is what it's all about. Yep. And congratulations to all the panelists. Honorable Doris Lynn Cohen, Honorable Usher Pandit Doran, Honorable Elizabeth Halsman, Congresswoman uh, Grace Meng, uh, Bronx District Attorney Darcel Clark, uh, New York City Attorney General, General Letitia James, uh, Chief Judge Janet D. Fiore, and the Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hockle. Congratulations to you all. And thank you to all the attendees and the Queens District Attorney's Office and the staff members who put together and work behind the scenes. Thank you so much and have a great night. Be safe everyone.